Hi, my name is Viviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi and today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Fish. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. I'm Juliana. I'm from Maltaka and I like I like listening to Today FM. Hi, my name is Shelly. I live in Arere. Today FM rocks my drug and lollipop. Bula, my name is So. I'm from Navua. I like listening to Today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky and Today FM rocks with my flip flops. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. This is FBC News. Tonight, four perish in a house fire in Bar. Strict security measures implemented for seven Rio Gold celebrations. And a huge turnout at the annual Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus Float Parade. Four people have lost their lives in an early morning house fire in Valele, Bar. Rachel Nath reports the police are still trying to identify the victims. This is the charred remains of a three-bedroom house. An eyewitness says he was awoken by the sounds of the fire brigade at around 4 a.m. He says it was raining heavily and all they could see was flames coming out of their neighbor's house. The witness claims there were only three people inside the house at the time of the incident. Before, only, only one mother, one, one daughter. And one, and one boy, they're living there, every time. The National Fire Authority has begun its investigations and says more details will be released tomorrow. All the investigation staff still in the scene, eh? trying to get their names and putting out our investigations. Eh? They haven't come out with, uh, with the results of the investigation and uh, they haven't determined the cause of fire. And the names too, they haven't released the name. Probably it's going to go to the police and the police will release the names. This is the second house fire in two weeks, which has claimed lives. Rachel Nath, FBC News. A case where a 32-year-old woman was found motionless in a house and her husband's body was also found has been classified as a murder-suicide. The woman was found by a 29-year-old carpenter on Thursday night. Her husband was found the next morning in Sakoda in Tadirua. Police say the post-mortem was conducted yesterday and the case has now been classified as a murder-suicide. Well, fans have been urged to adhere to security protocols while attending the 7th Rio Gold celebrations. Permanent Secretary for the Prime Minister's Office, Yogesh Karan, says programs have been organized in such a way where everybody can become part of it. Shirin Shivan with the story. People are being requested to cooperate with the authorities in ensuring the seventh Rio Gold celebration is incident-free. The program that we have outlined um, is carefully planned for to receive our heroes back home with the full Fiji uh, team. Yogesh Karan says it's a time for celebration and a lot of entertainment has been planned for the fans. Roads will be closed prior to the team's movements to and from celebration venues. The Nandi Airport through Namaka into St. Andrews Road, Raniga Road and into Prince Charles Park will be closed from 1.30 p.m. Radu Naivo Road, Nandi Back Road to Nandi Airport will be closed from 3 p.m. While in Nosori, the Nosori Airport, Kings Highway, Ratumara Road, Rewa Street, McGregor Road, Bow Road to the Grand Pacific Hotel will be closed from 5 p.m. On Monday, GPH to Victoria Parade will be closed from 7 a.m. and Flea Market Roadwell Road, McGregor Road, Flagstaff Laudala Bay Road into ANZ Stadium will be closed from 7.30 a.m. People can be on the side of the road, but I want to tell people that be very careful about the safety issues, not to come in front of the vehicles because we have got set time and we want to reach the National Stadium, the ANZ Stadium on time. Fans wanting to meet the team at the Nandi International Airport won't be allowed in. Airports Fiji Limited confirms movement into the airport will be restricted on Sunday. AFL will be redirecting supporters and families to the Prince Charles Park for the Team Fiji welcome ceremony at 2.30 p.m. And while everyone's focus will be on the celebrations, People should also be mindful of securing their properties 
as this will also be an opportunity for criminal elements to strike. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Meanwhile, Police Commissioner Brigadier General Sitiveni Gilho says rumor mongers will not hinder the upcoming Olympic gold medal win national celebrations. Brigadier General Gilho says Operation Rio Gold is underway and the mission is to ensure a safe and secure environment for all. In light of the recent attempts to create unnecessary fear amongst the general public, Brigadier General Gilho has reiterated that all necessary security measures are being implemented. He urged those spreading the information about an event disrupting the celebrations based on a prophecy currently going viral on social media to refrain from doing so. Government has organized bus my apologies. Government has organized free bus shuttles to the Prince Charles Park in Nandi and at the ANZ Stadium in Suva to welcome home Team Fiji and celebrate the gold medal win. Coastline Buses Limited, West Bus and Sabudin Buses will be providing free bus shuttles to Prince Charles Park tomorrow. In the Central Division, services between Suva and Nosori Corridor will be provided from Nambua, Cunningham, Rewanga, Sakoda, Newtown, Nakasi, Narere, Nandera, Kumbukawa, Makoi, Tuirara and Vale Levu. Free services will also be provided in a number of areas in Neita, Siri, Tailevu and Rewa. Coastline Buses Limited will also provide free services from Korolevu to Suva. Hundreds of people gathered along the Lodala Bay Road today to witness the 2016 Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus Float Parade. The week-long wet weather did not dampen the spirit of festival goers who were out there to support their favourite contestants. Kelly Vidala reports. The Hibiscus Festival doesn't seem complete without rain. But despite the unfavorable weather, people lining up along the streets is an annual tradition during the float parade. Well, I don't think the weather has succeeded in dampening our spirit here. You can see everybody is very excited and we are really looking forward to it. So come rain, come shine, I think we're going to move on. You know, it happens. When you do an outdoor event, sometimes it rains, sometimes it's really hot and you're sweating. But you know, without the rain, you can't have the hibiscus. Well, no, it is the bad, bad weather. Yeah, we can, we can see numbers coming up, eh? The atmosphere is crazy, it's pouring like rain, rain is everywhere but everyone is excited for it and everyone's up for it and music is just everywhere. And this is my first experience and I see uh, a beautiful so, a Fijian style. I really love the float this year. The king and queen contestants also enjoyed the attention from the crowd. Uh, even though it's raining, uh, there's a lot of supporters that's coming here today and I'm so thankful for that. It's usually but people, they go for, they're very supportive. They still join us for all the contests for the float. But atmosphere is really exciting. Everyone is excited today. Even though it's raining, people are still here. So this shows that Fiji loves, Fiji loves the hibiscus. Fulton Hagen Highways won the best float award. Miss FNU Richelli Vuetti has been crowned Miss Charity. She raised more than $41,000. The Vodafone Hibiscus charity chest for this year stands at more than $150,000. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Special awards were given to the queens and kings at the Vodafone Hibiscus Festival last night. Mr. DFM Mafi Pipo scooped two awards. She was given the Miss Best Traditional Attire and Miss Best Dress Awards. Miss Mushasi Milika Ryland also got two awards. She was crowned Miss National Tourism and Miss Personality. Miss Lunchbox Unise Randingi Tonga was named Miss Photogenic. In the King's category, Mr. Image Fiji Mishek Singh won Best Dressed and Mr. Personality Awards. Hanamara has been crowned Andi Senekao. Still to come on FPC News, Sai Prema Foundation launches new initiative to cater for the less fortunate. And Methodist Church raises more than $300,000 during annual conference. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, and Domo Ibiti, the Bonga and Bianca. Every Nakabeo, Welcome back here with FBC News. 
The Sai Prema Foundation of Fiji will now be focusing on providing health services to the less fortunate. The non-governmental organization's key initiative was launched by Acting Prime Minister Ayaz Sayed Kayum last night. Rachel Nath with the details. The Sai Prema Foundation of Fiji officially launched its Health on Wheels initiative last night. Under the new initiative, services have already been provided to people in Narere and Nosori. 300 people took advantage of the medical care. Many returned to their homes with a diagnosis of their medical condition and how to treat it, and they required medicine or correctional eyeglasses, etc. The foundation, in collaboration with the government, brought in heart surgeons from the Satya Sai Sanjivani Hospital in India. The acting prime minister says Fiji can become the hub for such medical services through these initiatives. We all focus on the positives. Then the uh, the advocacy, the the work of organisations such as Sai Prema Foundation will help us realise that our strength is in our ability to get together as a human race as our ability to get together as individuals who may be of different faiths, who may be of different ethnic groups, who may be of different provinces of different countries, but what actually binds us is our sense of adhering to the true values and principles of what our, what our different faiths preach us, and that is, of course, love and compassion. The Sai Prema Foundation of Fiji is inspired by the teaching of Indian spiritual master Sri Satya Sai Baba. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The Methodist Church has collected more than $300,000 during its Festival of Praise at Furnival Park in Suva. President Rev. Dr. Tevita Bainivanua says the contributions from the choir are still coming in. Pakasa Rainima has more. President of the Methodist Church of Fiji, Rev. Dr. Tevita Bainivanua says funds raised during their annual conference will go towards education. This is the money that we thought would be collected and be dedicated to the decade of education since this is the first year that we are celebrating the contribution of education of the Methodist Church in Fiji. Reverend Dr. Mbainabondo says some funds will also be set aside to rebuild schools that were destroyed during the cyclone. We suffered through a cyclone. Uh, our churches, our halls suffered. And, and uh, the good thing is uh, it has caused us to establish a, uh, our program, a program to look after this, uh, the, you know, the, the destructed uh, areas. The ordination service will be held tomorrow at the Centenary Church in Suva. Today is the final day for the Solevo singing competition here at Farnival Park and the wet weather will not dampen the spirit of church members who have gathered here in Turek. For FBC News, I'm Toka Sarenima. The Hot Bread Kitchen is sponsoring airfares for Marceline Camillo and Nelson Delailoma Loma to their six-year rugby scholarship in England. The company's marketing and sales manager, Selina Samisoni, says they started paying the airfares for the sports scholarship winners in 2010. Savara Tambua has more. Nelson Dalilomalom and Marceline Camilo were chosen after the Kachi Rugby Games last year for their outstanding abilities as well as their humble and gentle spirits. Proud parents Mr. and Mrs. Dalilomaloma as well as Mr. and Mrs. Camilo thank the company for covering the AFAs. We're uh, really excited um, with the opportunity that Hot Bread Kitchen has uh, given our child. Um, primarily he would not be going without the sponsorship. Uh, they've uh, taken on board uh, the huge amount of expenses eh, and, uh, on the budget. I'm happy in the sense that you know this is an opportunity for him to grow, eh? grow uh, with his education, you know, go out there, learn new things, meet new people. The Hot Bread Kitchen engages in this sponsorship every year so that the affair does not become the thing that holds these children back from this prestigious opportunity. Nelson attends St. Joseph the Walker Primary School in Asinu, while Marceline attends Mary Sewer Street. They fly to England next Friday. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. The Education Ministry has taken over the affairs of Vashisht Muni Institute in Navua. This after questions were raised on the school's financial matters during the annual general meeting three weeks ago. 
Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says there was a commotion during the meeting and to avoid any issues, they have taken over the responsibility of the school. An audit is being carried out on the school's finances. Until such time the audit is over and then the ministry will conduct the IGN. So, because uh, we need to ensure that the money that we provide is used for the right purpose. So, until such time the audit is finished and IGN is held, uh, ministry will look after the school and ministry will conduct the IGN. The Vashisht Muni Institute includes Vashisht Muni Primary and Secondary School. I am Jugen Nambilo Talib, Radio VG2, 24 seconds, and I am with you. We are in the Mangeri Tauka, in our heart and mind, we are in Radio VG2. And we are in the same way, we are in Radio VG2. My name is Abhinesh, I am in Nindi. I am in the same way, I am in Radio VG2, because in the same way, I am in it. Welcome to FBC Sports. A humble hero is how Fiji 7's forward Chasa Veramalua is being described by family and friends. Like many others who are eagerly awaiting their heroes, villages of Korotongo and Singatoka, where Chasa hails from, are planning a huge party next Saturday. Roland Koroy reports. Korotongo village in Singatoka is abuzz with excitement, Meadow. But none could be prouder than the gentle giant's mother. <laughs> We are very close and uh, I am just so happy that my son is taking Fiji and the family name out to the world. Those close to Chasa say he was always destined for greater things. As a young boy he was, he was quite reserved. He was um, always very reserved in everything that he did and then we knew that he would, he would either um, achieve something academically or achieve something in his games and then um, it just caught us by surprise. We have chosen the 26th of this month as the day that everyone in the village will come together to celebrate and welcome Tasa home. More than a week after the historic win in Rio and it's clear that celebrations are still continuing here at Korotongo village in Singatoka home to lanky forward Chasa Veremalua and by the looks of it celebrations will continue for many more weeks to come For FBC News in Korotongo village Singatoka, Roland Koroi the Fijian parliamentary staff have also joined the momentum to celebrate the historic win. Melitavanga reports the staff held their own little party ahead of the biggest celebration on Monday. It's almost a week ago that our seventh team registered Fiji's name into the historic books. However, the celebrations are still continuing. Every Fijian is making an effort to show their appreciation to the players. This uh, little event that was organized by the Secretariat this is really an expression of our gratitude to the boys. Um, we felt that we should do this even though they are not here yet. But uh, it's really an expression of our gratitude for what they've done for the country. And Viniana Namosi Malua says the players have given a new recognition to our small island nation. We thank their families and we thank the management, the technical team, and uh, Ben Ryan especially. I think um, we, uh, we agree with the Prime Minister that while we are a little dot on the map, we, we have staked our mark in, in the world. With the players arriving tomorrow, their families, friends, organizations, and even business houses have planned events apart from the national celebrations. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. In Olympics, Usain Bolt declared himself the greatest as he achieved the unique sprint triple-triple that has long seemed his destiny. Bolt 29 won his third gold medal of Rio 2016 and his ninth overall as he anchored the Jamaican 4x100 meter relay team to victory. Japan finished in 37.60 seconds to claim the silver medal. Canada earned the bronze medal. Germany's women's soccer team today won their first Olympic gold medal beating Sweden 2-1 in the final. Both teams had missed scoring opportunities in the first half. The goal started coming early in the second half as Germany took the lead in the 48th minute. Sweden continued to press for the equaliser but could not find a second goal as the match ended to one. 
Estelle Mosley celebrated her birthday in style by punching her way into the history books as she became the first French woman to win Olympic boxing gold. Mosley, who turned 24, edged a nervy split points decision 2-1 over China's Yin Junhua in their lightweight clash. Serbia's men's basketball team is through to the gold medal final for the first time after defeating Australia 87-61 in the first semi-final today. And USA still leads the medal tally on track to win the Olympic Games yet again. USA has 38 gold, 35 silver and 32 bronze medals, followed by Great Britain on 24 gold, 22 silver and 14 bronze. China, Russia and Germany remain in the top five. Defending champions Nandonga hammered Malolo 42-10 at Prince Charles Park in Nandi to retain their HFC Bank Fairbrother Challenge. The Stallions crossed over the try line six times in what was a one-sided affair. Eroni Vasiteri scored Nandonga's first try in the fifth minute. Nandonga led 13-10 at half time. The Stallions scored another four tries in the second half to secure their victory. Nandonga will take on Namosi in the next challenge. <laughs> Rain was experienced over most parts of Fiji today. A trough of low pressure with associated cloud and rain remains over Fiji. It is expected to gradually move east away from the group later at night. Cool temperatures were recorded in all centres. Lambasa was the highest on 28 degrees, while Nandi was the coolest on 23 degrees. The outlook for tomorrow, rain clearing from the west, mainly fine over most places. Now for Monday, fine apart from brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, you can expect cooler nights. Recapping the main stories. Four people have died following an early morning house fire in Valele Mbar. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Sitiveni Gileho assures rumour mongers will not hinder the upcoming Olympic gold medal win national celebrations. And hundreds of people gathered to witness the 2016 Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus Float Parade. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. And to our poll question. This week, we are asking, should Ben Ryan remain the head coach of Fiji Sevens? To answer, visit our FPC website. Well, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizensice.fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us those news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night. This is Malin Rabu from uh, Batang. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Crow Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because a really wide range of music. I'm Saini from Kashmir Lotaka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.